Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, I applied some textures of the sun, of moons and planets on my 3D objects and I reworked my JIT anim node hierarchies so that they use attributes instead of patch cords. In this video, I'm going to create a skybox that contains a space texture so that there is always the picture of space in the background and we can move around it as we move the camera. We are also going to look at how to change the camera position so we can focus on individual planets, the sun, the moons, and so on. So to begin with, I'm going to create the skybox object, which is called JITGL skybox. And immediately after I create it, you will see that it is completely white by default. So we have to load in a skybox texture. And to do that, I also need a JITGL cube map. It's going to take a texture and it's going to apply it as a cube map, which is the right kind of format for a texture to wrap itself around a rendering context. This will become a bit more clear in just a second. Hence, to do this, of course, we need a space texture, right? A cube map or a skybox texture of space. And for this, I'm using a generator, a procedural uh, space skybox generator created by www.tyro.net. I'm going to link this in the description below. And this is a really useful website. It just creates random space skyboxes with different nebulae, with different uh, sun, with different colors, different amounts of stars, and so on. So for my purposes, I'm of course going to get rid of the sun because we already have our own sun. So I can just turn off the sun here. I don't really like the nebulae in my own solar system, but you can have it on if you want. But the point is we need these stars. And downloading a skybox of this image is going to create a texture that is shaped just like this, this T-shaped or a sideway cross-like shape texture. And our JITGL skybox is going to wrap this image around the rendering context, which is also cube shaped. So if I click download skybox here, it's going to download it as a, uh, as a zip file. I already have it downloaded here. And if I unzip that file in the folder, you're going to see that there is going to be a cubemap.png. I already named it the space underscore cubemap.png, and I copied it to the root of, my, uh, of the folder in which I have my patch. So now I can delete this skybox folder and the skybox zip, and I only need my space underscore cubemap.png. So going back to our patch, now I'm going to add this as an argument to my JIT GL cube map, just like what I did with the textures. I'm going to give it the file attribute, and then um, let's see what did, what did I call it? What was the file name again? Ah, space underscore cube map.png. So that's space underscore cube map dot png. And it is loaded inside this cube map. I just have to trigger it by sending a bang to its first inlet. And as soon as I do this, as you can see, it is applied in the skybox. I just have to do this once to load this texture to the skybox. So instead of having to do this manually each time I open this patch, I can create a load bang object which is going to send a bang as soon as the patch is loaded each time I restart it. All right, cool. So uh, now we can rotate around uh, this world to see what this sky box looks like. So I'm going to take my JITGL camera and I'm going to connect it, uh, connect a JIT anim drive to it. But this time I'm going to give it the, uh, the attribute UI listen one. Now this is going to listen for my keyboard presses, especially my WASD presses, and it's going to control the camera according to that. So right now I'm pressing the WASD keys. I can also press Q and Z on my keyboard to go up and down in this rendering context. Another cool thing I can do is to add the attribute lock look on my JIT GL camera. If I type in lock look and then one as an attribute, then it is going to be focused on this middle section. So even if I rotate my camera using JITANIM drive, it is always going to be looking at the center point. And then you can see what the skybox does. It uh, rotates with the camera. If I rotate the camera, the skybox rotates with it too, which really gives it that uh, infinite space feeling with this kind of texture. It's really, really cool. 
And if I just want to reset things to normal, I can type in anim underscore reset. I can create that as a message and I can send this to JIT GL camera, I believe. So if I do this, yep, it is fixed, but of course it's too close because it just resets it to the zero, zero, zero position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this message, put a comma, so the text that is going to come after is sent as a separate message. I'm going to say again, position 007. And now if I do this, I can rotate the camera all I want and I can click this button to go back to where I began. All right, so that is how you create a skybox. And while we are at it, let's also see how we can create different camera angles, uh, different camera positions for the planets. Now, the simplest way to do this is to create yet another JIT anim node that is going to that's going to control the camera. So we can create a JIT anim note. Uh, I can give it the same position I gave the camera since the position is going to be controlled by the JIT anim node now. And I'm going to have lock look off. I'm not going to enable it because that is going to mess things up if we continuously switch camera angles. Right, so I can delete, uh, I can add this here. So this JIT anim drive controls JIT anim node, which, sen which sends its messages to JIT GL camera. I can get rid of these attributes here. They are not necessary. And now I can use uh, send my anim reset message to the JIT anim node object, which is going to con control the position and the rotation anyway. All right, so I can move around once again, and then I can click anim reset to go back to where I, ha I was before. Okay, now why have I added JIT anim node here? Now I can work with hierarchies using attributes, right? I can say name sun and I can refer to this name sun in my uh, planet JIT anim node as, you know, saying anim sun, it binds it to that parent JIT anim node. Now what I can also do is I can send messages to set uh, the parent of a JIT anim node. For example, if I create a message and I make it say anim uh, planet one, I believe that is the name of the uh, Yep, the JIT anim node named planet one. If I send this message to my JIT anim node and clicking it is going to set the parent JIT anim node uh, to the, that of planet one. So now we are looking at everything from the point of view of planet one. And as you just saw, it kind of went into the sun there. To fix this, you can make planet one's uh, grid shape a bit farther, or you know, the planet one in general a bit farther than the sun. So when it's rotating around it with the camera, it's not going into the sun and burning itself in incredibly high temperatures. So I can also create an anim sun, not sun, but sun that is going to uh, switch the camera angle to the sun which is also kind of what we started with. What do notice that the space, the skybox is rotating now because we are actually rotating with the sun itself. You can also create a planet, uh, planet two. Right, and since we rotated this planet two to work with the texture, we are also viewing it from a different angle. You can fix this by using a combination of JIT anim nodes and some trickery, but I'm just going to leave it like this here because I actually find it pretty cool if it's uh, a different camera angle for one of the planets, right? Uh, and if I remember right, I also had names for the moons, right? Uh, yep, moon one, moon two, moon three. So I can also focus on the moons if I want to. I can create another message, anim moon two. I don't know, let's do that one. And now we are looking at the moon which is rotating once again around the planet, which is rotating around the sun. So the lower you go in this hierarchy, the cooler I find the camera angles. And if we want to reset everything, we can just press, I believe, anim reset position 007. Nope, that does not fix it. Okay, then we just send an empty message. We just say anim. And we don't say anything after it. And we send this message to our JIT anim node, which controls the camera. And there you go, that sets everything back to where it was. So we can look at our first planet, we can look at the sun, we can look at the second planet, we can look at the second, uh, we can look at the first moon of the second planet. And if you are working with presentation mode, if you actually want to create an interface using this, uh, you can do a nice trick to trigger these messages through nicer looking messages. For example, 
if I want to reset everything, I can create a reset message and connect it to my anim message. So now clicking this reset is going to trigger this message to this JIT anim node. I can also say planet one. I can say sun, planet two, and moon two. And this is just for UI purposes. This does not have a functional difference, but it's nice if you are going to create a UI, if you're going to work with this as a part of a performance or installation that you don't have to think about what anim planet two means and you can just click on planet two. All right, I think this is it for our solar system. And as always, there are a lot of cool things you can do with this, right? You can create a bunch more planets. You can create alien planets. You can create uh, non-sphere shaped planets. You can create cubes, triangles, by you can look at the reference of JetGL grid shape and see what other shapes are possible with the shape attributes. You can play with JetAnim drive and you can make things rotate in a different way. You can make it so the rotation is dynamic. It receives its rotation values from an outside source that is changing, such as audio. Right, and uh, with this you can create, I believe, a bunch of cool installations and performances and whatever you want. So I hope this was useful to you. I hope this was interesting for you and once again, Thank you for watching.